Hi, my name is Agile, and I support Gen X Grown Up through Patreon, and I believe you should too. Just go to patreon.com slash Gen X Grown Up. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listeners, to this episode 149 of the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. I'm John. Joining me as always, of course, is George. Hey, how's it going, guys? You know that Mo is here. Hey, everybody. In this episode, we're going to watch a new Hulu thriller series that highlights the changing face of crime and the criminal justice system, test drive a new gaming headset for those marathon online sessions, and play a super nostalgic puzzle platformer where you're tasked with rescuing stranded spacemen. Those topics and many more are coming your way this episode, but first it is time for some fourth listener email. Look, the three of us are here, and we will often listen to the show, but if anybody else does, <laughs> that's the fourth listener. He, he's qualified that now. <laughs> well, I've learned that I know George doesn't listen. I know. It's established. If anybody else listens, it takes time to write in. That's our fourth listener, and the fourth listener this time around is Kevin M. Cool. Kevin dropped us a line, and the subject line of his email was 3D printers. Oh, okay. cool. Yeah. 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 It's been a while. Yeah, it has been. Yeah. So, Kevin says, just got done listening to your episode when John and Mo had just received your Creality CR6 printers. Oh, wow. And, and George about... hadn't yet, right? He was hot about it. I That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I was the one that found them, and right. yeah. you guys got them, like, months <laughs> in you. advance or something. Yep. Crazy. So, he goes on to say, John, if you think that spoiled you, check out Bam Boo Labs X1C or P1P printers. Yeah. I saw those yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of videos on those things. They are They're like shit crazy. Six, seven hundred dollar giant things that have so many mm-hmm. more features than my poor little Creality, but it's not the features or the giant. It's the speed. Yeah, the speed is, is really? 12 it's, times faster what? than any FDM printer on the market. It's, it's ridiculous. And people, I saw a bunch of videos, people running those tests and stuff. How are they breaking the laws of physics? I mean, the stuff They're needs not. time to heat up and cool. It's crazy. No, no. It's because because of the way that they're printing. So our printer, uh-huh. the bed itself moves. These yeah, yeah. printers, the bed doesn't move at all. Okay. It's only the arm moves X, Y, and then the bed lowers on Z. Hmm. So they're able to move everything faster that way. And they're able to stream cooling across the bed platform oh. without having to worry about the cooling just coming directly on the head. It's it's crazy. I watched like 15 yeah. videos on it so far. They're <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm doing a whole episode. That's right. You're That's right, my Kevin. tech part Yeah, of these segment. things are cool. There you go. Yeah. Uh, He goes on to say, Mo, my first printer was the Prusa Mini Plus kit that you had to put everything together on. Mm. The Ender 3 Pro was a breeze compared to that. (laughs) Uh, He also takes note, I know y'all do gaming. Gutshot Games did a Kickstarter recently for a 3D printed gaming table. Okay. Uh Uh, They're still releasing files, but they've released a lot. I backed it and I've been printing it and it was worth the money. Better to go look at it than me try to explain it. So I'm passing you guys a link. And I've provided that to you, Mo, if you'll throw it down there. Absolutely. I'm curious. I took a quick look at it. I didn't dig in deeply, but it's like, if you just hover over the link, you can see it's like, you can make it what you want. It's all these elements and you print it to make what you want. It becomes this big kind of environment for whatever game is that you can play. It looks pretty, just stupid cool. Oh, right. That is a reasonable pledge price though. Really? Yeah. What is it? Did you see how much it costs? $55. Really? Well, you're just getting files, right? So you're, you're not paying for material or shipping or anything. You're paying for the models right yeah but still i mean Mm-mm. you know nope, not bad just having all those files ready to print is you know that's cumbersome enough i couldn't do it no i'm not, I'm not gonna make them i know mode made a what did you make you made a whole rig for a, a teleprompter system yeah. and how many iterations did you have to go through to get it oh just right yeah like somebody else doing that for you is well worth the pledge yeah, absolutely that you would do for that yeah Cool. Thanks for the tips. Thanks for the info, Kevin. We're you got a ways to catch up if that's how far back in the catalog you are, but we're glad that you're back there listening. Uh, and yet we still have our printers, still use them. So uh, thanks for the information. I appreciate that you wrote in as well. We love it every time a fourth listener writes into the show. If you would like your email featured here on the show like Kevin's, it's drop dead easy. Just send us an email to podcast at genxgrownup.com. We'll read every single one of them and most of them, like Kevin's, is eventually going to make the show. Okay, with that good business behind, it's time to jump into the body of of 149 right after this. 
Hi, this is comedian and writer, and let's be honest, I do a lot of things. This is Dean Archipotus, the host of Whiskey Business, the podcast not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey. Yes, we drink and talk about whiskey, but we do so much more with so many interesting people. For example, we talk to comedians like Greg Warren. You know, I don't want to brag, but let's just say I can walk into a Red Lobster and get whatever. You know, I think the pause right there is probably more important than the word. Amazing athletes like boxing champion Buster Douglas. When a fighter's down and he's looking for his mouthpiece instead of trying to get up. That's when I knew it was over. Yeah, yeah, right? And, yes, Bigfoot chasers. Do you believe in Bigfoot? And if so, does he really eat beef jerky? <laughs> the Bigfoot thing is people have seen these, and, and I've seen a lot of compelling evidence about it. It's Whiskey Business with Dino Tripodis. Join us for what we call a good conversation with a good pour. You really can't ask for much more than that, can you, people? Check us out at whiskeybusinesspod.com, a proud member of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Be sure to subscribe to or follow Gen X Grown Up wherever you listen. And while you're there, rate and review the show, too. It helps more than you know. Budweiser and Bud Light join with USA Today to give baseball fans something new. Now for the first time, you can also pick up an official all-star fan ballot free wherever you pick up Bud or Bud Light. Vote for your favorite major league players. Then test your baseball trivia and win valuable prizes. Answers are in USA Today every day. So fans, settle back with a cold Bud or Bud Light. Vote for your favorite all-stars and be part of a baseball tradition. Let's get cooking then, talking about media we have been consuming since the last time we spoke. Now, of course, this could be a comics or music or books or film or television or whatever it is. Uh, and Mo, I want to start with you. What is it you've been checking out? Well, actually, I want to talk about a couple shows that ended, actually. Okay. We had the last season of Barry. I just finished that one recently. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the last episode of Ted Lasso, which everybody's been looking uh, forward to. Don't and- even start. I'm still on the campaign <laughs> to try and get him to come back. I've watched <laughs> like 20 interviews with that guy oh, saying, I know. They you keep know, trying it's to time. Push- I'm like, fuck, it's time. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> to get your ass to work on season four. That's what it is. I know. But what they have to say is like growing up as a kid, you know, we saw TV shows. And I remember for the most part, TV shows just sort of faded away, right? They just sort of ended. Season ended and it just didn't come back for the most part. I mean, sometimes mm-hmm. you had ones that, you know, that actually had like a last show, like a Mary Mash had a last show. Like a Mash like, had. Like right. I remember Mash, but yeah. yeah, many of them, you're like, is it back this? Like, you don't know if it's going to be back next yeah, year or until not. you get yeah. the TV guide, right? right. Mm-hmm. It says the fall lineup. Right. You know, I remember Barney Miller had one, you know, all these different had these ending shows. So it seems like now these days, it seems like they're writing things with an ending in sight. Like they said, this is going to run X seasons and we're done. Mm-hmm. Which part of me, like, with, I'm with you, George. I think Ted also had at least another season in it easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I have to give him credit for saying like, okay, look, this is our vision. We're done. I don't want to keep beating a dead horse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just, like in that particular case, like Barry felt like it was time to end. Yeah. I was okay with Barry ending. Mm-hmm. But Ted Lasso in its particular case... I felt like the stuff they wrote into this season deserved a follow-up that people who were either fans of the show and the characters or fans of soccer or both Mm -hmm. would really want to see. I mean, you can't tell me, hey, the team makes it into the UEFA Championship League this year for the first time and then not give me anything about that. How do they do? The team never... (laughs) That's that work out. <laughs> yeah. They get to the premiership. They lose to Man City by one point. Mm-hmm. We get to see Pep Guardiola in the episode. Yeah. That was, that was cool. freaking awesome. I love that. But, you know, I just felt like that that series had a lot more to tell. There's still the whole, yeah. the Keeley trio relationship yeah. thing that they mm-hmm. left. I don't think this is the end. I think they're telling us the end. <laughs> I think it's going to take about two years off and then they're going to give us a Christmas special or some <laughs> kind of shit to tie this up. They really need to. Yeah, they've been talking about a special spinoff show is what I've been hearing a lot with like with some of the other characters doing their own show mm. separate from Ted Lasso. There's no Ted Lasso in it. So I don't know. I mean, it, I'd be okay with that. Ted Lasso is the archetype of yeah. the show, but he doesn't have to be there. I'm no. okay with Beard and Nathan running the team with all the other cast of characters and still getting to see the show. Yeah, yeah. So Barry, I totally agree with you. I think it need, it was time for it to go. It was, it was, it was his last, it and, its course. But it yeah. ended well. The ending was, it was weird. I'm not going to give anything away, but holy crap, that was <laughs> 
was a weird there was right. a weird season but it ended and i'm like glad it did and bill Hader. i mean the guy is freaking amazing i mean he wrote directed produced he all of those yeah. uh, phenomenal i'm not caught up on either of those i know they're both wrapping up mm-hmm. i'm not caught up yet but uh, i'm hoping that barry ends uh don't, don't answer my question i'm yeah. hoping that barry ends in a nice conclusive way that you get an end of a story because i think that story deserves it but ted lasso is one of those that makes me think of like maybe you could do you know you could follow like the british television model where either you do some really short seasons or series they call them later Mm -hmm. or even just do it like as as a you know made for television or streaming movie right you can just follow up with these characters maybe they don't want to commit to a whole other season but you know throw some money at them they probably show up for three weeks to shoot a movie right you could you (laughs) follow up well you you could cover a lot of story in a you know like a two-hour movie probably yeah no definitely i mean he's even mentioned in the last few interviews that they modeled their whole series to run just like the british version Mm -hmm. of the office just a couple of seasons and a christmas episode or something like that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's to mo's point about shows now being written to have an arc and i kind of wondered john this goes back to our early sci-fi days I wonder if that's not because of the success of some shows like Babylon 5 Five. that had a planning start, middle, and end to them over a specific period of time. That was kind of one of the first shows that I remember that did that. Mm -hmm. And now, to Mo's point, it feels like more and more shows, especially on these streaming services, are doing it that way. Serialized is, that's the model for streaming anymore. I mean, I think really Babylon 5 did it for sure. And then you had um, Breaking Bad started out kind of episodic, but man, Mm -hmm. it started an arc that was super serialized and major. And after the success, and that was on what, FX or something, AMC or FX or wherever it bounced uh, around. AMC, I think, but yeah. But their success, everybody was like, well, Breaking Bad is going to be this good. We're, I think everybody did that. And that's the pushback from like Strange New Worlds that Star Trek does saying everything is serialized. Can we try some episodic again? Because there's room for both on television. I think they the pendulum swung too far. So I think there's room for both. And, yeah. uh, and they, there's a great a couple great examples of ones that have done it well. So. Yeah, so that's, so it says stuff is ending, but you're, John, you have something that just came out, right? I do, yeah. I was looking forward uh, last, I think it was last time we spoke to, uh, I think it was, it's, you know, it's summertime, time for horror movies. So we're right. a new horror movie in. <laughs> right. It's, uh, it's, I think it's you, this week. Yeah, time right. for a new you horror movie. You said last time, George, any time <laughs> is horror movie time anymore because it's, yeah. it's just a fun genre, you know? So I went to see The Boogeyman, which is a bit of an outlier in the world of horror movies. Mm-hmm. So it's a PG-13, not a super like hard R, okay. blood and guts kind of thing. That's fine. Based on a Stephen King short story. Okay. So those two things actually had me looking forward to it because of those, because because if you, I'm mean, Stephen King, his pedigree, no brainer there. But if you do a horror story, a horror movie that is a PG-13, you have to rely on different things. You can't just throw mm-hmm. more blood and guts and gore at the screen. You can't just throw more profanity right. at the screen. You can't throw more insanity at the screen. You have to. Some of that has to be in your imagination, which is something that with modern CGI and technology, people don't bother with. They're like, just show us the monster yeah. all through the movie. So I went to see the Boogeyman and. All the reasons I was looking forward to it, it paid off for in that it was that kind of it's in the dark. What did I really see? And you, the scare is in your mind. Yeah, okay. there are some jump scares. Sure, you do get to see the monster, but almost kind of not. <laughs> like, oh. like he's there. They put the budget in. You see him, but only when he's like reacting with other things. Because it's a fairly common trope in horror movies now. He's one of those monsters that uh, this boogeyman is like you can't see him in the light, right? So like in the trailer, you've probably seen like in the dark, you see his eyes back there. Right. Oh, okay. You're okay. like, oh, crap. And then you shine the light on him and he's gone, right? He's right. He's right. Evaporated because he's like invisible in the light. It kind of follows this story that effectively the boogeyman, though he's known as this mysterious children's tale or whatever, but it's he's a real monster or entity that steps in when parents are not taking care of their children. Not it's not about the kids being bad, it's when the parents aren't involved and now they leave a void in the child's life that this entity can seep into. Huh. Oh, and, okay. Interesting. Yeah, and so what the, the premise of the film is that this young lady, and we've seen this story before at the beginning of it, this young lady, the the daughter that you see, is like two daughters, a younger daughter and an older mm-hmm. daughter. The mother has recently passed away, and the dad is internalizing it. So he's holding them at arm's length Mm. because he doesn't want to deal with it. And so the kids feel abandoned. And now this boogeyman is starting to seep into their life and their world. And they're finding that it's real. 
So it, 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 to watch it, I went to see it with my daughter, who has been here on the show before as a, as a guest talking about horror movies. And she's really my barometer for, you know, I know what I expect out of horror movies, but I have decades of expectations. And she's really, she's well-versed in old horror movies and the current and knows what's in And she's hard to please. And despite the fact that it wasn't the big scream and gore fest that we enjoy in a lot of films, I think the psychological part of it made it made it more enjoyable probably than it would have been if they had thrown a heavier rating on it and you saw more. Um, hmm. So she enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I think I would. Yeah, there's this this middle ground that means good, but not awesome that I would call like a three and a half token for Boogeyman. Okay, we're seeing. Hmm. It is worth okay. seeing. It is worth okay. seeing. It's worth seeing at the theater. Full price, probably not a great idea. It's not an amazing film. It's not going to change the way you think of horror films. <laughs> but as a summer horror film that kind of came out of nowhere, kind of unexpected to me, and having the Stephen King backing, it turned out to be a good film that I will probably watch again now that I've seen it before. Okay. So worth checking out. So, if, if, hey, there's a lot of new stuff out. Once you've seen all the Spider-Mans of the world that are going on right now, <laughs> if you want to see something else, Boogeyman, you could certainly do worse. So, all right. Cool. How about you, George? What have you been watching, man? Yeah, well, uh, you know, just like you talked about in the tease earlier on when we started the episode, I've been watching a new police procedural type of uh, TV uh, show yeah, that's right. only streaming on Hulu. It's called Class of 09. They are releasing this week to week, so it's not oh. like you get the whole season at once. I kind of enjoy that every now and then as a throwback to the old television days mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. were talking a little while ago, John, about, you know, this there's room for this on television. Yep. I had to check myself because I almost commented, well, you know, television isn't really television <laughs> anymore. It's a device, not a medium like it used to be. Like when we were growing up, television wasn't just the device. It was the whole spectrum of the things that were on the device. Now with streaming, you watch stuff on your tablet or your phone or my kid, you know, takes his flip phone, which is a combination of those two things to work. <laughs> and the word television doesn't apply to his generation like it did to our generation. They're just like, okay, whatever's in media. It's a monitor now that you hook up to the internet in most cases. I mean, there's yeah. still broadcast yeah. stuff, yeah. but that's only a sliver of what's available. You're right. Exactly. So this show kind of throws, a, it's kind of in between because it's only on streaming, but it's doing the weekly episodic thing. Mm -hmm. It's a serialized show. So it's every episode is important in the series. Okay. And what they've done is they take the police procedural and they put a time dilation thing on top of this mm. where you're watching the characters in three distinct points of time in the same episode and the way that they let you know is very you know non subtly a graphic pops up on the screen <laughs> and it's like 1990 or 2009 the past then it's okay. like oh okay <laughs> 2023 the present then it's 2040 whatever oh the future the future oh that's cool yeah all right so they do all three timelines and essentially it's grappling with our criminal justice system and what would happen if artificial intelligence were in Ooh, were put into our topical. criminal justice system and how would that affect things so what could go wrong <laughs> all these characters class of 09 refers to the fbi class that they all were a part of they became agents in 09 okay. and the four main characters so uh first of all brian tyree henry now he is the lead of the show okay. even though another famous actor kate mar is also like kind of a co-lead. The thing that we were talking about this before the podcast, you might people might recognize him the most from is he was in the recent movie with uh what's the pretty guy? Oh, oh Brad Pitt film. Brad Pitt, there yeah. you go. <laughs> Bullet Train. He was one of the two twins. His character was called Lemon. Right. Uh, so, I loved him in that. <laughs> yeah. He's the main guy. He in the past, he's an FBI recruit agent, just like the others, like Kate Mara and the other people. Uh, he becomes in the present the director of the FBI. Mm. And then in the future, he's the guy leading the charge of this AI intelligence, basically taking over the FBI. Now, agents mm. don't investigate in the future. Oh, they're just dispatched by the AI, oh. organ, you know, the yep. thing, the cloud computing, whatever. And so you see all of this stuff happening. They jump back and forth between past, present, and future to get motivations, to find out what the characters are going through and why the decision at one point in time is influenced by the decision at a different oh. point in time. It's really a well put together and well thought out structure. I was just about to ask you, and you, you answered half of my question, which is once you get to the future, why bother going back? Because we know how they got there, but you just right. explained how you're, <laughs> it's like, oh, this situation, let's show how they got to the, be the person that made that decision. I get that. 
And I didn't realize there was a future sci-fi element in it. When I watched the trailer, and the trailer mm-hmm. doesn't tell you we're jumping through time, or it's not yeah. really jumping through time, right? It's it's right. it's looking at people at different points of time, right? They're not traveling or anything. Yes. And I even saw in the trailer at one point one of the characters had like this weird contact lens in her eye thing. And I'm like, that was lit poorly. It looks like she has a black <laughs> eye. And now you're like, oh, she does probably some cybernetic implant or some crazy thing she's it got. It is, yeah. Okay. Oh, that, and having that kind of an element. I, mean, I watched the trailer. I, I never heard of it until I saw it here. You're going to talk about it. I watched the trailer. It looked good. But now that I know it's like there's a science fiction element to it, I'm even more interested. Yeah. There's definitely a science fiction element to it in everything that's in the future. It's not just about the AI. It's about those little subtle nods, like the one character, Kate Mara, you're talking about has the eye, but you you're left to wonder up until like episode six. Okay. How the hell did she get that eye? Because we won't know until later. Uh, Oh, that's cool. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So that's what I mean by like, they show you the future, but things are left to chance. You don't understand because they're not telling the story in a linear fashion they're telling the story in a subject fashion so whatever that episode subject is that week Mm -hmm. they show you how they got to that part in all three different timelines i bet it's a lot of aha moments isn't it like oh my god that's where that came from that's cool after like episode (laughs) two it's a lot of aha moments Mm. so i mean do you find it hard to follow or did they do a good job with all the time jumping not only did they do a good job, they did a lot of subtle things with the time jumping. So it's not just the big graphic that pops up and says past, present, or future and gives you the year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They also do subtle things with like the coloring of the screen. So the future is always slightly washed, a little grayish, mm. like it's an overcast okay. day in the city kind of a <laughs> thing. The past is always very bright and sunlit, even when they're in rooms. Hmm. And then the present <laughs> feels like we do today Average in 2023. Huh. So they do a really nice job with that. The people who were in charge of the photography and the director, they must have worked seamlessly together to put all this together before they even got to the set to film. All the costume decisions were mm. on point. It's not like Bill and Ted, where when plastic. you get to the future, the people are wearing those <laughs> crazy things, outfits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It looks I mean, like a raincoat or something. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's. I think it's also because we have to show these characters in their 20s, then in their 30s, and oh, then yeah. in their mid to late 40s. Mm-hmm. So the character, they do subtle little things with like skin makeup and stuff so that, you know, they age them a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's really well thought out and put together. I'm almost sorry that it's on a limited platform like Hulu. Mm -hmm. If it would have been on something like Netflix and garnered a lot more attention, I think it would be a much larger hit than it is on Hulu. Okay. I think you're probably right. I mean, you enjoy these pr- police procedurals way more than I, I do. do. And I like them. You enjoy them way more than I do. So I saw this trailer and I, what I thought when I first saw it was, oh, this is right up George's alley. But now the things <laughs> the things George is telling me is telling me, oh, well, that part of it is right up my alley. So actually there's, there's more to it because like yeah. I like the jumping around the aha moments, the discovering, mm-hmm. like you, you watch something for three or four episodes and the, f- the fifth episode they go, and there's where the origin of that came from. You're like, oh crap, it's been meaningful all along. That's a neat structure. Yep. I appreciate those kind of writing yeah. things. So, all right. Awesome. Class of 09 on Hulu. Well, more stuff I got to watch. Thanks, yeah, Jamo. <laughs> add, add, add it to the list. <laughs> Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey, and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. Honey, should we take the other car? I'd rather not. Ford Escort now offers an attractive new design, plus fuel injection and a 660 powertrain warranty. In fact, the redesigned Ford Escort may make your other car seem considerably less attractive. Honey, aren't we ever going to take the other car? Nope. 
the world's best-selling car just keeps looking better all the time. I'm going to kick off Tech and Toys this week because okay. we have a weekly call, you know, on Mondays where we kind of get together and talk about mm-hmm. what to show us. Mm-hmm. And I had trouble because my headset wasn't connecting for some reason to my computer. Oh, and- oh yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's why you have a new headset because you're all oh. broke. I got a new headset. <laughs> <laughs> and and we were heckling you. We were like, Mo always has some kind of technical difficulty. What's his problem? It was not his fault this time, George. An yeah, actual it, thing broke. It actually, well, it actually broke. I mean, he, he bought the thing that broke, so it's well, partially his fault. And, and the thing is, I mean, that, I've had that thing for probably like six years. I mean, it's worked like a champ that whole yeah. time. So I was yeah. like, yeah, so it broke. I was like, mm, yeah, I got my life out of it for sure. But anyway, so <laughs> so I was in the hunt for a new one now, a new headset I wanted to wear. Sure. And I had some basic requirements. You know, I was looking for, I wanted a wireless one this time because the other one I had, old one I had was a wired one. Oh, okay. I wanted a volume control because mm-hmm. I hate the ones that you can't control the volume on the headset itself. Like you have to actually oh, do it. Oh, gotcha. On the headset. Right. On the, on the headset. Yeah. And a mute button, which is also very handy. Mute you. Mm-hmm. Mute you or the headset or both? Uh, mute the headset, basically. Yeah, okay. okay. And then, you know, and besides that, just and then just something comfortable because like when we do yeah. this podcast, you know, we have, we, we talk for a few hours here right. usually. So, yeah. you know, if you don't have a comfortable headset on, you know, it's not a fun thing. So, what I landed on was uh, through Amazon, of course, was um, <laughs> this one called a Red Dragon H510 Pro. And of course, like everything these days, it comes with freaking lights on it. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just the design aesthetic now, right? Yeah. You got, it's got you to have look some cool. kind of LED Everybody's kind of have freaking, crazy thing. But you could turn them off which I appreciate. Mm. There you go. All okay. right. So I was like, okay, at least I could do that much. So I paid it. It was 60 bucks because I said I didn't want it. I wanted a fairly decent one. Mm-hmm. I used it a little bit yesterday. I was doing some gaming and then I right now I'm using it. And um, the sound is crystal clear. No lag, no anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's not Bluetooth. It actually has a dongle you have to plug in the back of your computer. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not like a Bluetooth thing. It's USB, which I actually kind of like because Bluetooth to me is not always that. seems to gets a little flaky sometimes for me, mm-hmm. but that could be just me. I don't know. And so far, far so good let me tell you i mean it's comfortable it's like i said sound is super clear and it has the basic features i'm looking for now to be clear you said you're using it right now you're using it to listen to john and i you're not using the microphone part of it exactly exactly right right. our studio mics for that got it yeah i mean i did i was talking with some friends online on discord last night about that and they said yeah it sounded perfectly clear so i was like okay good (laughs) so you this thing's wireless and i I heard you turned off the lights which probably saves on battery a little bit but uh, my wife has a wireless headphone that she uses to watch television sometimes. Mm-hmm. What's the charging situation with this? So is like, is there batteries? You plug it in USB? No, USB you hang it on USB a dock? Charging. What do you... Okay. Uh, USB charging. So that's, that's something else I want. I didn't want a, mm-hmm. a dock or, you know, right. or changing batteries or anything. You know, I want some. Right. Uh, apparently the headphones will last up to 20 hours on a charge. Okay. I can see that. Sure. Which is decent. With, With the lights off. Me. Lights off, please. <laughs> With the lights off. Right. right. Does it have noise counseling? Because sometimes that affects battery. Oh, uh, no, it does not. Okay. So yeah. you probably will get closer to that 20 hours. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Noise right. cancellation like kills battery. Yeah, there's computing uh, going on, right? It's recording right. and playing and processing. Yeah. It's active. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. So I said 20 hours, plenty for me. I plugged in and charged up. I wasn't sure where it was at, but it charged in like an hour or so. I mean, it was fully charged. Mm-hmm. So it didn't okay. take any time to charge it. So, so far, so good. And I said 60 bucks. I was like, that's about, you know, what I wanted Fair. to spend. Fair. Sure. There's cheaper ones out there, but I was, they seem a little sketchy. Yeah. I mean, I've just recently, I watched a video on one of those guys who, you know, he reviews the most up-to-date tech and he was looking at the new Dyson headphones. I don't know if you guys saw those, but Mm-mm. they're headphones that you put on your head and then there's a thing that goes across your nose and mouth and it's like <laughs> air filtration so that if you're walking around in the city, but he said they're terrible, but they were like $500 oh compared to your 60. <laughs> so people are doing stupid things with headphones these days. I was just curious with yours. You mentioned two things. You said that you wouldn't like a dock. I would think the one device I would like a dock mm-hmm. with would be headphones because I could just set the headphones down on the dock on my desk. A place to put it. And then pick oh, it up to charge. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I didn't think about that. That's a good point. Because um, yeah. right now, I actually had a stand for my old headset, so I'll probably right. just use that one. But yeah, now you think about it. Like that actually, if that's your situation, it probably would make sense to have a dock. Right. Now, mm-hmm. the other part you mentioned was the charging, but mm-hmm. I didn't hear you say, if is it, is it micro or USB-C? USB-C. Okay, oh, good. Because oh, now it passes the John yep. test. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Just, yep. But if you're if you're releasing shit in 2023 with micro USB, better have, go back to the, go back to the drawing board yeah. and put USB C in it. It's just ridiculous at this point. It's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. So John, I was looking at what you have, and mm-hmm. we've talked about these already, haven't we? We have, we have. So I have a couple items to talk about. 
These are things that we have talked about in the tech segment before, mm -hmm. but I have updates to them. Oh, okay. Because only fair we talk about, we recommend items and we say, this thing is awesome. I've had it for three weeks. The best thing ever. That's not always true months, years on. I actually had two items that just in the last month or so have failed. They've broken, stopped working one way or another oh. required attention. And I wanted to call out both of them and tell you how I resolved it. Because if you listen to an old show, you might go, well, that thing was crap. What do we do about it? But I actually got some good support support on one of them. So I'll tell you a little bit about them. The first one is the one that uh, you guys gave me no end of grief about. And that was my gun massager, the impact oh wrench God. for your foot, whatever. You, we've all seen them now. It's the, it's, oh. it has like the, it has like, a, it's like a, what do you call it? Like an air socket that you put, you know, <laughs> when you're in the garage and take <laughs> tires off, right? <laughs> but it's got the different adapters and it's the impact massager that it, it does yeah. the, the fast. It's the one that had the, who needs a man setting, right? That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> So that's one that I've been using for, and I love it because I have really achy, flat feet. And so I use it mostly on my feet in the evening and I run over my feet and I wince and it actually helps and it feels really good. And I used it for, I don't know, six months, eight months or so. And it just died on me. Oh, uh -huh. so yes, we gave you a bunch of crap for that device. Uh -oh. No, uh -huh. don't but say it's true. Yes. Yes. George. <laughs> I did. Oh no! One <laughs> a few months later, I actually have it in the drawer, sitting right next to me. Yeah, here. Yeah. I use it on my neck and back uh, because I have a similar problem mm -hmm. to John's feet, but yep. just up there. But I did not really think I was. I was in that camp of like, okay, that's just a stupid product. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's fucking life changing. Isn't I it? don't need a woman at this point because of this massager. It's great because oh, no at my setting. advanced age and health issues, I don't need the woman for the stuff you might think. I just need a woman who can massage my neck once in a while. And this takes care of that. Well, then George, you can fully understand the situation. I I was in when mine stopped working entirely. Oh yeah. I would lose my shit. Absolutely. <laughs> so I considered doing like chasing down support on it and whatever. I think I mm -hmm. paid like, I forget. I want to say I paid 60 or 70 bucks for it back then on sale. So before I went through the whole like support process and that kind of thing, I thought it's been a long time since I bought this. Let's see what the state of affairs, like have they gone out of favor? Are they getting more expensive, less expensive? I hopped onto Amazon, $30 now is what yep. these things cost. Really? They are so cheap. There's no reason yep. to not have one. If you have a part of your body that hurts, 30 bucks <laughs> is a great deal. And this was marked down from 100. I think it was 34 and change mm -hmm. is what this ends up running. Uh, and so I'll give you, Mo, a link to not the one that broke, but the one that I got to replace it. Uh, and it's just a kind of a non-brand. Everything on Amazon, it seems like <laughs> it's yeah. either a very, very well-known brand or you never heard of them. And I expect yeah. it's just right. you know, random manufacturers slowing, throwing their names on things. But the replacement I got as good as the other one, even better in that it doesn't have a proprietary plug to charge. Guess how it charges? USB -C? USB C. That's right. That's the one I had <laughs> was USB C. USB -C. Exactly. <laughs> so love that I replaced that. The other thing that broke is something that I know many people have bought. Mo, you have bought mm -hmm. is the biometric fingerprint front door deadbolt. Yeah, yeah. I bought, I love I've got mine. one sitting on a shelf. I still haven't installed it. Yet. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I, I love years mine. ago we got the Lockley, and it was right. okay. Yeah. And then I think I want to say. Uh, this is about eight months ago. I replaced it with a new one by a company called Smonet. And mm -hmm. uh, this one was superior in every way. And I talked about how my my wife and daughter were upset because they had to, you know, reject it, reject it like four or five times to get their thumbprint recognized. And this new one that I got a few months ago is the best. It just, you put your thumb on yeah. it. It's like, oh, it's, it's right instant. Yeah. And about a month or so ago, periodically, you would put your thumb on it and it would say door unlocked, but it wouldn't. So it was apparently superior in all but one way. <laughs> <laughs> and right. that it still broke. Resilience was its its problem. And it would think a while and they kind of go beep, 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 because it knew something didn't work. Okay. Mm. So it has a one-year warranty. So I contacted the manufacturer through Amazon, had a little trouble getting a hold of them. They were a little unorthodox. They chose to do support through WhatsApp. This is an Asian company, and that's oh. WhatsApp is the de facto yeah, messaging you know, over there, which I understand. And so I used WhatsApp to communicate with the support guy. But the support I got, you shouldn't think twice about working with Smoke. Uh, now, knowing I worked in customer support, I went ahead and recorded a video showing them, here's what I've already tried. Here's what it's doing, you know, so because I didn't want to go through the have you turned it off and back on? Have you charged the batteries? Right. And of course, they do for dummies. But I had this video. I contacted the guy. He's like, hi, nice to talk to you. I saw your video. Would you try this one more thing for me? Sure. OK, I'll be shipping a new one to you. What's the best address? I mean, boom. It was wow. super simple. 
my no, it doesn't reset my warranty. My warranty still is only for the period of year on the first. It doesn't keep mm-hmm. recycling and starting ah, over. It should though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it will. Maybe on the life of the thing. He suggested it wouldn't. But the reality is that now I I thought it was gonna, just going to swap out one piece. The design has changed just enough that I had to replace yeah, the, the whole thing. thing. But it wasn't difficult because the other thing that it does when you have to replace a lock with the same brand is you go and go. Oh, this is a new one. Import my history from the last one that I used with this app and everything oh. except biometrics. So you have to redo your thumbprint just for security. Yeah, makes sense. But the, the history of who opened the door and when and all that stuff, the naming, all that carried over in the app. So hmm. even though I love this thing for a while, I had to, I felt like a damn caveman. I put a key on my keychain to make sure I could get in the house. <laughs> had to use it a few times, uh, but now I got it back. It's replaced. It's brand new. So I just want to give you an update on these things that they kind of, you talk about them and forget them, but sometimes they don't, you know, months later, they're not what they used to be. Here's a couple that one I couldn't live without, well, two I couldn't live without, and one they gave me a quick replacement for. So nice. Decent customer experience, I would say. Well, I mean, just the fact that they sent you a replacement like that without giving you a hassle about it. No hassle. No hassle. Remember with your video card, George, like, well, you give us a credit card Mm -hmm. to hold or what? No, none of that. Just like we're shipping it. Here comes. Okay. That's really good. I mean, I think it was probably partially influenced by the fact that you had a ready-made video. It didn't hurt. Yeah. Set to give to them. (laughs) And they were probably like, oh, he could put this shit on like YouTube and ruin our name or something. Each episode of Gen X Grown Up has show notes loaded with links where you can learn more about our topics. And there's even more to see and hear over at GenXGrownUp.com. There's good news and bad news. First, the bad news. Three out of four unsuspecting people will get gingivitis, an early form of gum disease. Now, the good news. Listerine antiseptic is the only non-prescription mouthwash accepted by the American Dental Association for its significant help in preventing and reducing plaque and gingivitis. And Listerine still kills bad breath germs. So brush, floss, and use Listerine. It's good news for you, bad news for gingivitis. This is the main event of the podcast for the three in attendance locally and the millions listening around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! Time to talk about games. Games, 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 games. What a throwback. John finished his drink so I can move on now. That's teamwork. Teamwork right there. That's right. Uh, I want to start off just like Mo did with his segment, start talking about his thing. I'm going to do the same thing in games this time. I started playing a game from that same Turkey Syria bundle yes, that yeah. I've been talking about for a while now. So it's still the 23 cents per game kind of thing. <laughs> uh, this one was called Stick Fight. Hmm. Okay. This is the same thing. <laughs> well, it's it's Stick Fight in that it's stick characters. Like you oh. remember when you were a kid, oh, you would draw little yeah, stick yeah. figures, mm-hmm. right? So it's those figures in one of those kind of like um, gravity style games, you know, where like you're flopping around your arms and legs as gravity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, ragdoll thing. (laughs) But you're in a fighting game against other stick figures. Now, this game looked interesting and fun to me. I just like the graphics and the aesthetics and everything. It's the game fighting aspect reminds me a little bit of Nidhogg. You guys remember that oh, game? Oh, of course. All the time. Oh, right? my goodness. One where John would just, you know, stabby, stabby, stabby all I, the time. I love just making people curse. It's my favorite part of that yeah. game. <laughs> You were good at it. (laughs) This game is in that same genre, not just in the fighting, but in that it's co-op. The problem that I've discovered with it, this is on Steam. I can't figure out how to remote co-op. It appears to only be couch co-op. Oh, Oh. okay. Oh, that's very difficult because you can't even start the game without two characters in it. Oh. And the start screen says, kill your friend to start the game. (laughs) Okay. So if you don't have a friend, you can't play it. Exactly. (laughs) George, just just go make a friend, George. Go make a friend. Well, that would be easier said than done if I wasn't, (laughs) you know, like COVID related heart attack having kind of ass. But (laughs) okay. (laughs) I really wish that a game in this modern era and john you have this game the only reason why i know that is when i downloaded it on steam it says your friend john has played this game okay i'm like i must have tried it at least oh okay yeah well at least at some point Mm -hmm. 
but it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews and it's, you know, a lot of people seem to enjoy it, but it feels like one of those games that when you're having a party of friends over, Mm -hmm. this is a game that you pull out and you guys can, like we used to do with Nidhogg or some of those other types of games, you can yell and cuss at each Mm -hmm. other and get mad and everybody can laugh and that kind of thing. Yeah. The good times. Now, is this this is something you didn't get to play it, but from the trailers and whatnot, and I I wish I could speak intelligently and apparently I played it at one point, but I don't remember it, (laughs) but right. I mean, we've talked before about like applications like Parsec that will allow you mm-hmm. to make couch co-op games remote oh, play. Yeah, you know? So there's, yeah, there's right. that possibility. It's not as seamless as, as you said, you would like to have that baked into the game. So you'd matchmaking and all that kind of thing. With Parsec, you it puts a lot of responsibility and on Steam you. Steam is supposed to have that baked into their platform. But mm. there were multiple comments left, right and center on oh. the game's comment section about Oh, I can't get it to work with Steam co-op or whatever. Oh, they so, they have their own version of that, do they? Oh, I didn't know that even. Steam has had a co-op, like couch co-op thing for, I don't know, two or three years now. Hmm. And they just haven't seemed to ever be super effective with the know. games on their platform. But not with Stick Fight, apparently. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> so it's tough to review a game if you really didn't get to get into it. It's the next one on your list, but it's kind of meh. Yeah, I mean, I think (laughs) if I were to play with somebody here, couch co-op mode, Mm -hmm. I think it would probably be a four token game. Oh, okay. It's got a lot of different elements. I played it with just like I pressed a button on the keyboard to pop up a second character and then I just killed that character over and over Mm -hmm. again. Every time you kill somebody, you immediately appear on a new random map, it appears. So like the things going on around you are different. There are weapon drops that happen. There's uh, elements in the world like wind blowing and things like that that change between level and level and level. You can push over towers and you can kill your opponent in a million different ways. And unlike Nidhogg, <laughs> where fun. it's pretty much stabby, stabby, stabby. 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 Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. This game's apparent motif is just find any way you can to kill your opponent, you win. I appreciate that. Yeah. I can see that being a fun couch co-op game. Maybe that was the, they chose that limitation because they wanted people to get punched. Maybe that was their decision. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are games that I want them to be couch co-op, uh, although... Because of our situation, we like to play games and we live in different cities. I'd like them to be remote. You know, Twin Cop is a classic example of that. That game's great couch co-op because you're right next to your person yelling at them, screaming at them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'd love to be able to play it across lines. You know, it would be nice. Without jumping through hoops, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's that game. Mo, your game is specifically geared to be played online with other people. Oh, yeah. Yep, for sure. Uh, it's Diablo 4, dun, dun, dun. Mm-hmm. 10 years in the making <laughs> since Diablo 3 came out. It officially came out last Monday. Today's the uh, the ninth, so it came out, I think, the first. I think was the day it officially dropped. Mm-hmm. I bought the early edition, so I was actually able to play like three days ahead of everybody else, which was nice. Oh. I, I don't know if any of you guys have ever played the Diablo series or, or, or have any experience with it or not. But no, I don't I know what it looks like, but I haven't played it for any duration. Yeah, Okay. Like, I know what the logo looks like. I'm very familiar <laughs> yeah, with yeah, it. There's a big devil that head. I know that one. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was the game that made Blizzard, actually. I mean, I think this is the game that like, right. Blizzard mm-hmm. started started so. with way back in the day i've been playing diablo 4 and it's as for me as addictive and a time suck game as i found which i'm happy mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. <laughs> it's massive I, mean, I played a ton and there's just so much crap left to do uh, you know just side missions and other dungeons you could go visit and you could build your characters out 30 different million ways you know i mean you go online and there's everyone talks about their favorite builds for these characters and that character or whatever i'm right now i'm having a really good time with it mm. cool now this is the one a couple of months ago i had to look back it was in episode 144 you yeah, were playing the months. beta for this yeah I, right? I signed up super early <laughs> yeah right right, right. you're like i don't remember what i paid for it so when it comes out it's gonna be yeah. free which is great for you but because of when i talk in a minute about the game that i'm playing i'm curious about what was your transition between playing playing the beta and going to the full version. How did it treat you? What did you get for having played the beta? Is your save preserved or did nope. it start over? So yeah, nope. Okay. <laughs> nope. So, so was the beta nothing more than just you tried an, in a walled you garden and the new one's different or okay? No, no. You get to play, you you got to play like a limited number of areas. Okay. And, and then limited characters. You only had like a choice of like two or three different characters and they have like six, oh. I think total. All right. Um, so that's how they limited. And it was, it was a smart move on their part because they got to like basically burn in all their environments. 
events. You know what I mean? Like they really make sure that the multiplayer works and all that stuff. So it was, it was mm. you know, it was beta, you know, so it, they made good use of that stuff. Nothing carried over for me okay. anyway. Uh, matter of fact, you have to like uninstall the beta version and install oh, the dang. game. You know, <laughs> like, they mean it. And all then right. when they ended the beta, like there was a good few weeks, almost, I think it was a month between when the beta ended and when the game released. So after you done beta, it's like, okay, beta's over. See yeah. you in four weeks and you can play the real game. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Withdrawal. It's like, John, it's like the you don't know Jack. Yeah. After three questions, yeah. go to the store. You like this game? Go to the store and buy it, schmuck. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's just a huge game. And you said you're when you're online with people, you're on, there's you actually see other characters there. Um, mm-hmm. You could just sort of ad hoc buddy up with people and go tackle something without even necessarily even talking to them. You know, you have enough emotes and stuff that you kind of get your point across. It's just like the original game. I remember so much from like how much time I spent on the other Diablo games. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is right there up there with it, as far as I could tell. Mm-hmm. I know Diablo is uber popular. It, yeah. Just because it isn't for me doesn't mean, you know, I understand mm-hmm. and respect a lot of people play it a lot. I had a live video premiere today and this afternoon and our friend Aaron was on the stream and he said in the chat, I paused Diablo 4 to come watch this. So that's like, oh, he's, that's wow. he's immersed in it. So, but I know. <laughs> so I, it, it's one of those things that I know it's those franchises, like people take off work when it launches to play yeah, and that kind of thing. It's crazy. So what are you seeing around the launch of it? And as far as, far as the community, what's the reaction been like from other players? Are they finding it's good, uh, bad? Yeah, this you... is the first one I played where the internet was really huge because it was okay. 10 years ago was the last version. So they had some mm. stuff, but not. Yeah, you know, it wasn't like it was is today, right? Okay. So today there are a million videos coming out, and it seems like some people, I don't know, some people are, are criticizing some parts of it, and I'm like, eh, I don't know if they're haters or just super picky, or because the stuff they're bringing up, like, oh well, you know, this class is not great because of blah blah blah, and I hate the game because of that. I'm like, well, don't play that class. Don't don't you know? do it, right? <laughs> you know, don't play like, something you know, else. It's, it's not that hard. I mean, so far it's getting pretty positive reviews, as far as I could tell. Hmm. They sold a gazillion copies of the damn thing, and you go online, and there's just tons of people on there but it seems like they they had a couple of small hiccups early on like where people couldn't sign on but they jumped right on it it was fixed like within an hour and then they would right. jump on play so, so it was not yeah like, it's, it's blizzard they're, they're gonna they're gonna do their best to maintain yeah. their name so. and, and they know the whole massive online thing i mean they that's what they do now oh yeah, yeah. that's their yeah. that's their jam right so they have a pretty good handle on it and the story and the interstitial animations and stuff in it are just crazy good you know that's the thing about it that you know there's this overlying story in the whole thing and it just sucks you in you know and it keeps you wanting to progress it to the next step to the next step except that's why are you going to next step oh look there's a little side dungeon there i guess i'll do that then you realize you spent five (laughs) hours you haven't gotten to your next step yet you know (laughs) yeah you mentioned earlier john was talking about people maybe taking off Mm -hmm. i have direct experience with that uh, specifically about diablo 4 my two oldest sons have taken nine days holy crap work they plan their vacation to play Diablo 4, and that's what they're wow. into right wow. now. Yeah. So it's not an uncommon thing. And I <laughs> talked with them. They have told me that in their f- circle of friends who video game, yeah. mm-hmm. that probably half of those people planned vacations for this time Damn, period. Damn. Really? Just <laughs> to play Diablo 4. So I'm beginning to wonder if we'll ever start to see news stories, because I know I've seen a few in the past about how a game game is affecting the workforce like productivity of America's problems. Productivity. Right. It used, to, it used to be Tetris way back when. <laughs> right. I'm like, you know, I wonder, you know, people are just, I, I want to have a vacation instead of going on a trip in the family truckster, they're staying at home and playing Diablo four. There's nothing wrong with that. That's no, what you no. enjoy. That's your vacation. Yeah, it's, fun. Yeah, yeah, fun, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just not yeah. wired that way. I love video yeah. games. There was a new game that released today and I didn't think, when can I schedule time off to play it? I'm like, when do I think I'll be able to get around to looking at that? Right. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm fitting it into my schedule, not bending my schedule to fit in. It's just a different mindset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think it's just it's because what they grew up with as being vacation worthy and fun, I applaud that they're following the thing that makes them happy. Yeah, fly like, that freak flag. We what were you just love? taught your vacation is Get spent away. on yeah. time traveling to Disney World or Universal or wherever god awful hot place <laughs> that you could sit in the back of a station wagon and burn yourself to death. That's what vacation was. You know, now if it's staying at home and playing a Diablo four or whatever. 
do you do you have a blast enjoy yourself the rise of the staycation nothing wrong yeah, with that there you so. go. <laughs> if, they have have a, if they have a clan and they're looking for new people let me know <laughs> you're too Dude, old to I play would, with them sorry but they yeah, know. they'd be like you're sorry your skills i don't know i'm you're pretty good back. <laughs> so luckily I, I have like old skills that are still there so <laughs> the there moment, you go. they'll be around memory. the campfire and grandpa mo tell us about diablo one grandpa mo <laughs> <laughs> in my day, in you my had to click twice. <laughs> they didn't have all these controllers. They use a keyboard, a mouse. <laughs> so yeah, so Diablo Four, like I said, a lot of fun. You know, I'm mm. sure get a lot of hours out of it. But your game, John, I I'm not familiar with it. What's the What's the nope. story with this? You should be. You oh. absolutely mm-hmm. should be. Oh. So a few months ago, I, I don't know when it was, but I was looking forward to this game. I knew it was coming out shortly. The game is called Moons of Darcelon. Yep. It's actually the second game in the Darcelon series by a company called Dr. Cucho Games. Mm-hmm. They did another one that was called, I can't remember, something else Darcelon. So they've started this planet called Darcelon or Darsa or whatever it's called. And the first one was like a spaceship. Like you flew a little space. It was Gravatar-ish. You okay, flew a okay. spaceship around shooting stuff and picking up, you know, whatever. Uh, that was like a super cheap little $5 quickie game. This, though, is their first kind of bigger uh, adventure, this Moons of Darcelon. <laughs> I'll, let me describe the game very quickly. Imagine you're playing Lemmings, okay. but you are walking around on the ground with the Lemmings. You're another character. So rather than clicking where they go, you're leading them. Like you're walking along saying, you guys come this way. And if there's a barrier, you can change the barrier. You can actually you know, change the terrain or that kind of thing okay. to get them to where the Lemmings kind of need to be. There's even Lemming Joe in the game they know lemmings Mm -hmm. is part of this game when you power up the game i say this is a nostalgic kind of retro game and it is you power it up it starts to look like a tv turning on with snow it looks like you're booting your commodore 64 it's a blue screen you type load you actually have to push the a button l o a d to make it happen you could bypass all this of course later but why would you want to in the beginning and then it loads and you see like you know how the commodore would load and you would have a square picture in the middle and then the outside was flashing colors as it decompressed off the disc (laughs) it's doing that none of that's necessary it's all a memory already doesn't matter but it's not off of disc I loved it. when you showed this to me, John. Yeah. It says yeah. loading from from tape. cassette. It said yes. on tape. That's that right. Was, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. That was so awesome. But then you get in the game, and it has like that deformed. Like you're looking at a CRT. There's GAN lines. You could turn all this on and off too if you mm-hmm. don't want those features. Uh, but you're this very expressive little character, and you start just running around, and it's like a squad based game. Right. You can okay. say, "Follow me. Stay put. Walk right. Walk left." The spacemen you're trying to rescue, they can't do anything other than just walk around where you tell them to. They can get hurt, though, by environments, by aliens shooting at them and all this stuff. And, and they're even afraid of the dark. Like, they won't go anywhere in the dark. You have to, so you get, a, you can start to get um, these power-ups or these tools. So you get a flashlight. So you wait your way down to the cavern and you shine a flashlight and say, follow me. And then you take off and you see a little speech bubble pop up going, I'm afraid it's too dark. You have to lead him out with the flashlight. <laughs> and then as you get more progressive levels, you get nice. like, guns and you get vehicles that you can drive in and you get uh, like lasers and stuff and jet packs that you can run around and i mentioned this game you could get a free demo even now the game is released you can grab yeah. a free demo mo uh-huh. and that's why i ask you about your diablo the free demo is the first i don't know four or five levels or so okay. and i played okay. this months ago and i think i deleted the demo because i'm like oh, i'm gonna buy it eventually i'll just delete it and then I, I downloaded the game and it started and said resume from level five and i'm like whoa like it could pick up right where i left off so it was, nice. a, it was a seamless transition it's not like you played the demo and then you get the game and you can start over right if right. you like it, the work you put in and the, the scores and the records that you did, uh, they count toward that. Uh, the whole style is very tongue in cheek. Uh, I would call it an action puzzler, if you would. Right? You have to figure out how to get guys from point A to point B without them getting too hurt or die. You have to get X number of them to the exit and you get a score based on how many you saved, how fast oh, you did okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. That sort of thing. And each one has a quota, like you must save, like Lemmings, save X number of guys to proceed. You can let some die, but you save them all, you, you get you, more right. points. Yep. So I was looking at the the uh, the launch video that they put out there and yep. it's funny because the graphics look like old old style graphics, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they're way smoother. I mean, it looks right, very yeah. modern and smooth, the way, which right. is cool. It, I think it's very cool looking. You know? It's old graphics at 60 FPS and right. 1920 <laughs> by 1080 HD resolution. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> That's just like that Retromania wrestling that I talked about a few episodes ago. It's, very similar. Yeah. It's yeah. the old school design but with modern efficiency and modern yeah. gpu and cpu and ram and everything because there's no way 
that game that John's playing would play on a C64. Right. No. I don't care <laughs> what type of peripherals you stuck on that thing. It's never going to play that. Yep. But now you get to play it and relive the nostalgic history of what you enjoyed growing up. I, I think these types of games are wonderful. Mm-hmm. And I will say, I often, I don't like when people use nostalgia or pixel art or those kind of things in place of a good game. It's like, well, right. we have pixel art. That's good. Right. Yeah. We see some crappy stuff. This yeah. game would be good if it looked modern. The cool thing is it looks good it would be good modern and it's also nostalgic looking so you get both of those so that that's the litmus test you can't just be nostalgic you have to be nostalgic and quality and they do it both here so it's called moons of darcelon if you like it if you think you might like it get the demo it's free yeah try it yeah. out yes yeah shit why not before we jump out of the your game segment here george i saw you had just a couple more quick notes to make sure the fourth listeners knew about right yeah, absolutely. Oftentimes we talk about the games that we like playing, but we we have a hard time conveying when those games are going to be at the cheapest prices mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. our podcast, we record it a week in advance. Right. And so by Don't the time bad. we get there, the sale may be over. <laughs> in this particular case, there's a sale that's starting on Steam that's coming on, uh, let's see, it's going to be June the 19th and it's called- Oh, is this a summer sale? No, not yet. No? That's okay. June 29th. Okay. I found a website that oh. lists every oh, single neat. Steam sale sale for oh, the year, which right. is nice. Very it's cool. on the verge. Okay. You can find it there. Uh, summer sale is going to be June 29th through July 13th. That's the major seasonal sale. But there's one called Next Fest. Okay. Don't know what's going to be in it. It feels like maybe games that are going to be sequels, maybe. Okay. Because it's called Next Fest. Mm-hmm. That starts on June 19th and it runs until June 26th. Oh, okay. So it predates the summer sale by a couple of days mm-hmm. when it ends. Okay. Also, there is a couple of sales going on right now on the Epic Game Store. Now, unfortunately, both of these end on the 15th, which is the day this podcast releases. Oh, hurry. But you might have a few hours mm-hmm. to <laughs> if you listen to it right there. away in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's one that gets you different discounts um, on specific games, and it's called the Summer Game Fest. But then there's also another one operating at the same time called the Mega Sale. That one gets you 75% off of select games. Okay. So if you couple some of those games with the always in your inbox Epic store Mm -hmm. coupon Mm -hmm. that you always have in there, you could probably find some really good deals. And the only reason why I wanted to talk a little bit about it is because there's a game that they are putting up for pre-order on Epic Game Store right now that I just mentioned in the Discord server a few hours ago. Oh, yeah. It's not applied on any of the sales or the coupon. <laughs> of course not. But Alan Wake 2. Oh, wow. really? When we talk about 10 years. Yeah, that was, This is longer cow. than 10 years. This is almost 20 years wow. for this game. Has it been that long? That was an amazing Holy game. Holy crap. I believe Alan Wake first came out. I'd have to go look at it, but it had to be in the early 2000s because... My youngest son was still very, very young, like three or four years Mm. old when I got that nice Xbox 360 collector Mm -hmm. set that has the book and everything. They came out with a crappy Alan Wake uh, American Nightmare shortly thereafter. It was okay, but it wasn't nearly as polished as the original game. This new trailer for Alan Wake 2, holy (laughs) shit. It looks good. Oh my God. It looks creepy and disturbing and awesome. It's the same voice actor Mm -hmm. from the first Alan Wake game, which I love. Oh, nice. It's got new characters that you'll be playing, which is also fun. Can't wait to play these games. Have you already pre-ordered it? Yes, yeah, I knew you would. <laughs> I knew you would. I got the damn deluxe edition for $70. <laughs> but you should look, it's been 20 I, years since you had this thing you love and a new one comes along. It's like people give me crap because I bought the stupid Atari Lego. All my life, I wished I had an Atari Lego. Now I can get one. Yep. Shut up. I bought one. I love yeah. it. And I, I love that you broke your rule of just pre-order and buy the best one because how much yeah. you like it. Yeah, that's cool. The bad thing is that's not the only order I'm going to do. If I find out that there's some kind of box set thing with special toys or something, I'm going to buy that shit too just because Poster, I'm a sucker for this Poster, soundtrack, game. art book, God knows sound, <laughs> whatever. Right? It's, all right, Remedy, listen up. If you need money, just <laughs> more releases, yeah. George is on board. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it just looks awesome. I'm looking forward to it too. That's cool. Hello, and welcome to Novel Conversations, a podcast about the world's greatest stories. I'm your host, Frank Lavallo, and for each episode of Novel Conversations, I talk to two readers about one book, and together, we summarize the story for you. We introduce you to the characters, we tell you what happens to them, and we read from the book along the way. So if you love hearing a good story, you're in the right place. 
Our ninth season is coming this fall. Tune in to hear from some of the all-time great authors, Charles Dickens, Jules Verne, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and more. Subscribe to Novel Conversations wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're a diehard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. All right, before we wind it up for this episode, we always like to take a second here toward the end to talk about the things we're looking at now or looking forward to between now and the next time we get together. And I'll get the ball rolling uh, with a few things I'm looking forward to coming up in the theaters. <laughs> it's a new Jennifer Lawrence comedy called No Hard Feelings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't this seen that one look yet. funny. This is, is, this is it's a, cute. It's effectively she answers an ad. She's hard pressed for money. She answers an ad with this eclectic couple who want her to date their son for the summer date in quotes because he's this this really awkward kid who's never had a date, never had sex or anything. And they're basically paying her to be this surrogate and bring him out of his shell. Right. Have a first okay. girlfriend or whatever. And you can see what's going to happen. They're going to have genuine feelings or respect for one another. It's going to change the whole dynamic. But it looks hilarious. There is a throat punch in the trailer that makes me laugh yeah. every single time. <laughs> OK, yes. so even if I've seen the best parts in the trailer, I'm still going to go see this movie in the theaters. It's coming out June 23rd. Uh, the next one I alluded to earlier, I said a new game was announced and I didn't know when I could play it. Out today, June 9th, is this kind of first person horror game, but based around mm. aliens called the Gray Hill Incident. Oh, and it's okay. it's a uh, it's like a UFO abduction thing that happens. It's it's a period piece in the 90s, and you see UFOs and you see mutilated cows and you see people wearing literally mm. tinfoil hats because they think it's going to help them. The you know, other NPCs. <laughs> it came from outer space. Yeah. It, it but it it looks creepy and uh, you know it's, it's a first person adventure like you would play open world kind of thing I don't know how okay. open world it is but it's about aliens it's you know anything crypto or weird yeah. like that I like it you know if it was on In Search of with Leonard Nimoy it was a Bigfoot or it was an alien or it was anything like that I want to see it <laughs> so the thing I'm looking most forward to so very much though hmm. June 15th <laughs> the second season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds begins oh yeah again yeah. it's it's episodic, not serialized. I mean, it's got a little serialization in it. A little bit. The characterizations are so good. The work they're doing, the, the scripts, the, the talent. I love this show. And the new season uh, was not do affected. Do you love the show? I yeah, do. Really. I mean, I how do, do you feel about John? What happened, what happened to your Andorian again in season one? Oh. Let me tell you, watching, I, I finally watched that episode for the second time, and I have more respect for the decision to do that to Hammer. Oh. It's, it's a long story. We could spend a whole podcast about it. I wouldn't mind doing that. Anyway, can't wait for that. Uh, and it's 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 a weekly, so I get to enjoy it every week for ten weeks, and so awesome. Whew, okay, calm down, George. How about you? What are you looking forward to? <laughs> That's a great lead in. Ever. Uh, well, first thing I'm looking forward to is my second twenty second wedding anniversary. Oh. <laughs> John knows why. It's also his birthday, that's June twenty third. Right. Right. Yeah. Story goes that my wife and I had already planned our wedding for June 23rd, but because of her status in the country and all of the craziness that was going on during the Bush administration, we ended up being forced to get married sooner than that because we were going to have to pay some heavy, crazy mm -hmm. fine if we waited until the end of April. If we went past the end of April, that was it. So we actually got married on April 1st in Las Vegas mm -hmm. at one of those little wedding chapel places. Our marriage certificate was filled out in pencil. So <laughs> all the tropes that would be for a bad marriage, we passed them all. Uh, but it's also John's birthday on June 23rd. So for those of right. you who are out there supporting the channel and supporting his effort to go full time with this thing, ah. don't forget June 23rd is a way to, you know, say thanks for all the work that he's putting out there for us. And happy anniversary, George. I'm going to, I thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, I'm also going to do what Mo did to me last time, and what? I'm going to steal one of his things. What? I'm looking forward to the next season of Black Mirror. Oh, oh, Dick. gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> now you know how it Snuck feels. that one in there. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think this is season six, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. I didn't know they were doing more. Uh, it's the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the Netflix version, so it's not the original mm -hmm. British version. Yeah. So those are sometimes hit or miss, but I'm looking forward to them. Yeah. But the thing I'm looking forward to the most is a kind of a off the beaten path, new horror movie comedy kind of thing called the blackening. Oh yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to be looking forward to this because of how pale white I am, but 
I saw the poster for this movie about a month or two months ago in the theater, and the tagline was what got me right away before I ever saw a trailer. It was called The Blackening, and the tagline said, they can't all die first. <laughs> Damn. I was like, whoo, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to buy a ticket to this movie, but if so, I'm going to go see it. <laughs> It looks funny. I'm absolutely. It does. It looks really funny. It's coming out on June 16th, which I think might be the day after this podcast mm -hmm. drops. Sounds right. It's one of those that where they're kind of like uh, they're making fun of the genre of mm -hmm. horror films. And in particular, possibly how black people have historically been treated in horror right. films. So yeah. I, I think it's going to be a really funny, well put together film just based on the trailers. Yeah. But I mean, that's what I'm looking forward to. Mo, how about you? Well, I don't know. It's kind of took mine, <laughs> but <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I am looking forward to Strange New Worlds, obviously. Okay, yeah, it's going to yeah, be right. amazing. Yep. Uh, Pixar has a new movie coming out. I think it's June sixteenth. Elemental. Oh yeah, yeah, mm. the one with the elements, the water, right, fire, and water. fire. The last couple yeah. haven't really done it for me, but you know, it's Pixar. I'll see it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the last one is uh, Black Mirror. As everyone knows, oh. mm. uh, big surprise. Out, yeah, big surprise. Coming out June 15th uh, on Netflix. But again, it's season six. Uh, yeah, I think the first season with the British version was probably was the best one. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, yeah. But but I have liked all of them, though. But I have liked all of them. Just maybe they weren't as good as the first season, but I've enjoyed them. So I'm looking forward to this new yeah. season. So we'll see what happens there. I hope we get more episodes this time. I think season yeah, it was five so we got short. four. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculously yeah. short. Yeah, it's like it's, I think it's because they were doing that Bandersnatch thing. Oh right, that was. I wonder silly. if they didn't spend production oh, money they, on that. That was yeah. coming right behind it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh well, see how it feels, Mo, when you got your stuff stolen by George. That's all right. I know what I'm doing. I next. only took one. He took all three of mine last time. <laughs> I know what I'm doing next time. It's all. Oh, he's getting. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just back not going to put anything down. I'm yeah. just going to wait a last minute and see what Mo puts. It's going to be like an ebay auction kind of thing we're <laughs> gonna try to snipe one another <laughs> <laughs> oh before we get out of this episode i want to send a heartfelt thank you to a brand new patron oh nice we headed over to patreon.com and hit us up i want to thank you triple seven nice ah. and you know he's cool two ways because the s is a five in the word seven so it's triple five okay. even right so triple seven is it's really cool like a movie title and he's doubly <laughs> cool because his pledge is in euros so he's no he's not Ooh. yeah he's oh he's high class just he's not like us he's, uh, he's old world <laughs> that's nice Thank you, Triple Seven. Uh, we've seen awesome. your comments over on YouTube. We've seen you participating and getting engaged. And now you joined uh, joined the uh, army of amazing people who support us financially. We're so grateful for that. If you would like to join Triple Seven in his support, it's easy. You just head over to genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. Get out your checkbook or credit card, whatever they need. For as little as a dollar a month, you can pledge your financial support for Gen X Grown Up and help keep the lights on. Help ensure that we keep doing what it is that we are doing for the foreseeable future. Thank you so much, Triple Seven and everyone that supports us there. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of the show. But don't worry, we'll be back in two weeks with another one. But next week is our backtrack where we pick a single nostalgic topic and dig in deep. Oh my God. So we're doing a movie again. Yeah. And I rewatched this movie and this <laughs> might be one of the few perfect movies from our era or any era. <laughs> Wait, rewatched. So you actually oh, watched I this re -watched. movie this time. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, oh, no. Okay. I've seen this movie plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> In anticipation of and in celebration of the final allegedly film in the Indiana Jones series, we're going back to check out Raiders of the Lost mm. Ark. Uh, amazing movie. Oh, just, I, just, you can't stop singing the theme. You can't. Mm. I, everything about this movie, I just like, there's nothing wrong with it. And you could look for nitpicky stuff. Doesn't matter. It's just drowned out by the goodness yeah. in this film. Yep. So yep. Yep. join us next week. This is going to be a fun one. Maybe it's going to be a long one. I don't know. We'll see how well we can constrain our enthusiasm <laughs> for the film until then i am john george thank you so much for being here yes sir mo you know i appreciate you pal always fun man fourth listener it's you though we all appreciate most of all and we cannot wait to talk to you again next time bye-bye see you guys take care everybody Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Unacceptable for grown ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Grown up. George, what George remembers this? Mm -hmm.
That's good enough. <laughs> He's gonna start bringing like orange construction paper. It's fine. Yes. Mo had like <laughs> like a contract on that he one. Did. It was like, actually actually just copy my will. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I put off a draft of it to see what was in there. I was like, what the hell am I doing? He already willed his uh, his white balance card to somebody. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> good. And now it's fucking pouring. Oh jeez! It was funny. I heard the lightning strike, the, or the thunder strike rather, mm -hmm. and I'm and I hit me, and then I, wa I was looking. I watched Mo, and about three seconds later, he went because <laughs> <laughs> it made its way across town. <laughs> funny. Hi, this is comedian and writer, and let's be honest, I do a lot of things. This is Dean Archipotus, the host of Whiskey Business, the podcast not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey. Yes, we drink and talk about whiskey, but we do so much more with so many interesting people. For example, we talk to comedians like Greg Warren. You know, I don't want to brag, but let's just say I can walk into a Red Lobster and get whatever. You know, I think the pause right there is probably more important than the word. Amazing athletes like boxing champion Buster Douglas. When a fighter's down and he's looking for his mouthpiece instead of trying to get up. That's when I knew it was over. Yeah, yeah, right? And yes, Bigfoot chasers. Do you believe in Bigfoot? And if so, does he really eat beef jerky? <laughs> the Bigfoot thing is people have seen these and, and I've seen a lot of compelling evidence about it. It's Whiskey Business with Dino Chipotas. Join us for what we call a good conversation with a good pour. You really can't ask for much more than that, can you, people? Check us out at whiskeybusinesspod.com, a proud member of the Evergreen Podcast Network.